Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah. We continue reading from Imam al-Ghazali's On Disciplining the Soul, Kitab Riyadh al-Nafs, translated by Timothy Winter Abdul Hakim Murad. We have reached the chapter on an exposition of the symptoms by which the diseases of the heart may be recognized and the signs which indicate a return to health. بيان علامات أمراض القلوب وعلامات عودها إلى الصحة إمام الغزال رحمه الله said Know that each member of the body has been created to discharge a particular function and that it falls ill when it is no longer able to perform it or else does so in a disturbed fashion The hand ails when it can no longer strike and the eye when it can no longer see. Thus, it is with the heart, which falls ill when it becomes incapable of performing the activity proper to it and for which it was created, which is the acquisition of knowledge, wisdom and gnosis and the love of God and of his worship and taking delight in remembering him, making dhikr preferring these things to every other desire and using all one's other desires and members for the sake of his, of God's remembrance. God exalted is he has said, I created jinn and mankind only to worship me. The, the first thing that I would like to uh, comment on is uh, Imam al-Azal is saying that every, that each member every member of the body, every part, has been created to discharge a particular function. Whether we know it or not, medicine, the scientists, they continue to discover uh, functions in the, in the body that we did not know uh, about. The, whether it's now the uh, DNA, uh, different functions in the uh, in the body but uh, why i'm raising this because there's a certain part certain member organ in the body in the intestines that is uh, called appendix and uh, even in arabic they say as though they will say as dudi but still as i'm highlighting as uh and the etymology of appendix and is Zaida. Appendix, it has been added, you know, that it's not original in the uh, in the body. And is Zaida, it's extra, almost saying frivolous. That's a wrong description of that organ. And uh, I hope that someone in the field of uh, medicine would, or physiology, uh, biology, would come up with a proper uh, name for this organ. It could be the uh, uh, the storage for healthy uh, bacteria when someone is, uh, is sick and you have diarrhea and the intestines do not have the, uh, the adequate uh, uh, bacteria then this is really the uh, storage house if you uh, if you will there are no there are no extras in the sense of frivolous though just simply say i don't know the function of this particular organ and i think this is important the second issue which is now the uh, the notion of ubudiyya uh, uh, I created jinn and mankind only to worship me. Uh, the word only in, transla- in translation, you don't have فقط uh, in, uh, in Arabic, but it is definitely understood that this is really the, and correctly, that the, uh, that uh, our role uh, in this life, we have vicegerency on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, enabled us to use what uh, 
uh, all these uh, resources um, on earth and even beyond uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam how definitely we are uh, benefiting from the sun and the moon and planets that are uh, far away the larger ones that keep us in place in terms of uh, gravitational forces we are guided by the stars but I'm talking about our vice currency is to uh, the uh, this is khilaf, this khilaf al-ard. I'm not talking about the political office though politics definitely is part of it and I'm not talking about pity uh, politics I'm not talking about uh, uh, shameful uh, politics uh, nowadays they uh, they do elect uh, whatever this means now uh, they do elect presidents who have uh, a long record of uh, shameful illegal immoral acts that's not the politics that we uh, look for in, in in Islam there are decent people there are decent people knowledgeable because decent is not enough and this is something that uh, also is extremely problematic when you talk about appointing people because in office because simply they are moral because they are uh, uh, good uh, people that's not enough you need expertise in the field and you need a certain uh, character this is really for leadership it's not a Sayyidina Khalid ibn Walid he was a military general when he was the uh, leading the uh, enemy the army the uh, army of uh, uh, Quraysh and uh, the uh, the pagans the mushrikeen the uh, uh, the polytheists against the uh, Muslims and then he became a, uh, he became a Muslim and he became the uh, general the uh, military commander of the Muslim army so you need a certain uh, uh, capability so economics politics uh, of course the social order but even in the area of uh, art there's no human activity without uh, uh, an Islamic yardstick by Islamic yardstick I'm talking about the Sharia because when Imam Ghazali in few paragraphs speaks about uh, istiqama uh, he uh, he alludes without much details uh, to uh, living uh, a straight uh, you know uh, attempting to live and to uphold the straight path and so uh, there was uh, um, we have today people who literally uh, are aspiring to become presidents in certain Arab countries they expressed their uh, desire to become the president of the country uh, this is not about and this is not against uh, uh, being a rapper because some uh, rap uh, uh, songs they carry uh, a decent political message uh, they highlight a social problem etc uh, they uh, they reflect on the injustices uh, around them and elsewhere sometimes in the message is universal but that's being a rapper does not really equip you to become a president of uh, of a country and the same thing uh, a dancer she wants to be now that's even uh, more problematic but uh, she wants to become a minister of uh, culture uh, and the um, um, an author who uh, is being given given prizes for her uh, novel, which has uh, uh, scenes and uh, details in the novel that uh, uh, definitely are not in line with uh, uh, with Islamic uh, ethics and uh, morality. Uh, shameful uh, acts with um, graphic uh, details and the issue is not only someone who wrote this 
also we have people who are defending what they call freedom of uh, uh, of expression and they uh, in one article on al quds al arabi wasin al araj he uh, wrote about uh, against bringing ethics uh, to art whether we talk about uh, we talk about novels uh, paintings or uh, sculpture it's so simply do not do not uh, bring it's the other way around uh, just think about uh, uh, non-muslims who became muslims uh, who mentioned that because everyone is triggered by something subhanallah when they became muslim it could be hearing the, the call for the prayer the adhan it could be some recitation of the quran it could be for him this particular person who's uh, an academic in uh, in the uk uh, dr ahmed uh, keeler uh, a british white uh, south um, has nothing to do with his color but i'm saying that you know is uh, so he uh, the, he said that the reason for uh, like what triggered him was really seeing uh, what might be described relatively as perfect Islamic calligraphy and he wanted really to be part of this worldview where this perfection so yes to uh, to Islamic calligraphy whether it's verses of the Quran um, beautiful uh, poetry uh, there is certain uh, you know beautiful art with proportion uh, and this uh, nowadays uh, the call for no uh, no limitations, no uh, yardstick, no criterion, no ethics, no morality uh, uh, in terms of uh, of art, where uh, uh, expressing nudity in uh, you know in in a text or in a uh, painting or in a sculpture became the uh, the norm. Or even worse, not to have a theme at all in a uh, postmodern world of art where the uh, work of art does not point to anything outside itself and there is no message there. Or, so it's a, one can still talk about this much more. But going back to the idea of uh, we have been created, subhanAllah, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is really our primary. So whatever we do, it should be pointing in that direction, should aid us in that direction. A work of art, a social order, a socio-political order, the uh, economics, there's always the artistic of the, uh, of the uh, law, the Islamic worldview is... Uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected this uh, religion for us. The message is universal and we need to continue to do that. Now, worship, you have the formal worship, the five daily prayers, fasting during the month of Ramadan, performing Hajj, the uh, almsgiving, regular almsgiving, the zakah, uh, etc. You have the formal uh, forms of worship, but also you have uh, uh, the, you can do extra, you can do voluntary uh, uh, worship, extra uh, prayers, extra uh, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you talk about uh, if you have performed hajj, you can perform uh, umrah, the minor uh, pilgrimage, if you will. Uh, you paid your uh, regular uh, almsgiving, the zakah, but still there is room for uh, extra sadaqa. Uh, extra uh, charity you fast during the month of Ramadan there is room for uh, praying uh, and the Imam Al-Ghazali uh, when he uh, addressed this in the uh, book on the mysteries of uh, fasting uh, if one really f- calculate if one calculates the uh, extra uh, days uh, like Mondays and Thursdays the uh, three uh, days in the uh, middle of the lunar uh, month, uh, we call them the, uh, at any rate, the, uh, so there are the six uh, uh, days of uh, uh, Shawwal, the um, the day of Arafah for those who are not uh, pilgrims. So if you calculate all these throughout the 
there it's almost tantamount to the uh, uh, fasting of uh, Prophet Dawud which is practically half the year one day yes and one day uh, no now the other side of worship is having that intention that you are doing something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, it could be uh, a work of art, uh, working on, uh, you know, major, massive, and not only it's really not quantitative, but sometimes there are artists who uh, reflect on the uh, verses of the uh, uh, of the Quran. Yes, there is that beautiful calligraphy, but also the the colors, the theme, the background. They would reflect the the uh, uh, some of the meanings included in the verse or verses and if you do that uh, not not really for uh, uh, egoistic uh, reasons but you are literally you start your work this kind of work of art with really the intention that this is really for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you'd like to serve religion with this work it could be a work of architecture it could be simply taking care of uh, uh, when you are really there, there will never be someone who will uh, know what you what you have done. Uh, um, someone in was in Mecca. It was it was cold. Sometimes it's you know extremely uh, hot. Uh, probably most of the uh, year, but there uh, there is uh, a cold season, and sometimes it gets cold. So uh, someone, a young man, he uh, wanted to go to the uh, uh, to the toilets, but uh, and he was wrapping himself with a with a blanket, and uh, uh, he passed by a woman sleeping on the uh, obviously uh, it seems on the uh, floor, and she was not fully uh, covered. He took off his blanket, he covered her, and he went on. Uh, you know. Uh, and he uh, he addressed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said that this is really for his sake. Uh, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to con- to, uh, that it will be on his record as purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he would, uh, uh, as such, will, uh, will not uh, speak about it. Uh, but someone, uh, someone heard him saying, uh, making in, in his dua, saying, talking about that which he asked Allah subhanahu wa taala, by that which is between uh, you and I. And he insisted the his uh, friend, his uh, whatever is the relationship, he asked him, what is it? And he would not. Uh, he would not say, but um, you know, under a little bit of uh, um, of pressure, he said, "I would tell you, but on the condition that you will never say this to anybody except after uh, that I die." So that he will, uh, and then he told him about the uh, this story. Every single act, you leave your house to be the Lazarjal, always. Uh, by leave of uh, uh, of God, you leave your house to go to your work. It's a workshop, it's construction site, it's an office, whatever is the uh, your profession. But you leave the, your house with that intention that it's really for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that you take care of the family. Uh, so, so you have the formal forms of worship, and then every activity could be turned into. Uh, into that kind of uh, relationship of um, spiritually by having the right intention um, you know the hadith that uh, that works uh, deeds actions are uh, considered uh, accounted for according to uh, intention Imam Ghazali continues, thus every part is possessed of a benign function, that of the heart being the uh, acquisition of wisdom and gnosis, the ma'rifa, which is the uh, specific property of the human soul, uh, 
which distinguishes man from the animals. The uh, the ma'rifa, you have wisdom, and uh, wisdom follows uh, knowledge. It's definitely higher, uh, but definitely you need uh, knowledge also. The the uh, the difference between ma'rifa and ilm is that you uh, ascribe uh, ilm to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he is the alim uh, al-ghayb wa-shahad al-alim but the ma'rifa uh, is not um, most Muslim scholars would not ascribe ma'rifa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they would not say al-arif the human being becomes arif arif billah for example because ma'rifa is uh, always after a period of ignorance or after a period of not knowing, uh, a period of ghafla, a period of jahala, a period. So, wisdom and gnosis, uh, ma'rifa, which is the specific property of the human soul, which distinguishes man from the animals, for he is superior to them, not with regard to his capacity for eating, mating, seeing, and so forth, but rather with regard to his gnosis of the true nature of things and their origin and their originator, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is God, great and glorious is he. For should he know all things but but God, it would be as though he knew nothing at all. The sign of the gnosis of him is love, of him, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For whosoever knows him, loves him also. And the sign of this love is that one should prefer none of the things of the world, of this world over him, over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As God uh, has said, say if your fathers and your sons and your brothers and your wives and your tribe and the wealth you have acquired and the trade you fear may not prosper and the dwellings you desire are dearer to you than God and his messenger and striving in his way, then wait until God brings his command to pass. قُلْ إِن كَانَ آبَاءُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاءُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ وَأَمْوَالٌ قَدْ تَرَفْتُمُهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولَهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ So, family, your uh, ancestors, your offspring, your spouses, your next of kin, your tribe, your wealth, the trade, the uh, your houses, your palaces, your They should not be dearer to you than God and his messenger and striving in his way. So it's not only a matter of uh, uh, of uh, lip service, exerting your effort, uh, putting what you uh, what you know to um, into practice. Um, Imam Ghazali uh, many times in uh, the book on uh, uh, patience and gratitude sabr wa shukr he speaks about uh, uh, knowledge the uh, state of uh, of being and uh, action and obviously that knowledge is uh, needed and should always to lead to uh, to action and uh, that action is because you need and you desire something uh, something else with that action you study so that um, we talk about university certificates or uh, for example because you would like to have a job and a job because you'd like to have a place to live and uh, just to have a family and to have uh, in the united states they say this is the american dream but this is really the dream it's a universal dream to have some kind of stability in your life and place to for a dwelling and to establish a family, etc. That's that's that was the norm. 
until the disintegrate, disintegration of the uh, family. And, but uh, only the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is intended for itself. You don't, you don't intend by that something else. There is nothing beyond Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, Imam Ghazali continues, whosoever possesses a thing which is more dear to him than God is harboring a sickness in his heart. Just as a man who loving to eat mud and having lost his desire for bread and water must need suffer a sickness in his belly. There are the, these are the symptoms of the disease by which we learn that every heart saving only those which God has rescued is sick. Yet there are some diseases which exist unbeknown to those they afflict. And the disease of the heart is one of these, which is why the man who suffers from it is heedless. This is why the man who suffers from it is heedless. Even if he becomes aware of it, he finds it difficult to per persevere in the bitter medicine, bitter medicine of opposing his desires which is ache to the spirit's extraction during the agonies of death. Or should he indeed find in himself the strength needed for such perseverance, he may be unable to find a physician of insight to treat him. For the physicians who are the scholars, the ulama, the ulama, the ulama, the, uh, what we say, the rabbaniyin, uh, uh, not only those who memorize, but those who practice uh, have also been overpowered by this disorder. So if the physician is sick, who is going to uh, treat you? And treatment will be rarely be sought from physician who is himself unwell. It was for this reason that the malaise has become so taxing and chronic and that this science has become obliterated so that some people have been led to deny altogether the existence of the medicine and even the disease which are proper to hearts of course we have the uh, those who uh, always claim uh, when they are reminded of their shortcomings of uh, the hub because they have been straying uh, very far from uh, from religion, from the law. They always claim, my heart is pure, I do not really hurt anyone. That's not true. The heart is not pure. The heart is sick. Instead, men have given themselves over to worldliness and to activities which in outward appearance are acts of worship, but inwardly are no more than customs and acts performed when others are watching. So much of the symptom of the underlying disorder. Inshallah suffice it for this session and we'll continue on um, reading this chapter in the next session. Until then, subhanakallah wa bihamdik, ashadu la ilaha 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 